watching The Beach. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has officially become the best-selling Mario Kart game, outselling Mario Kart Wii, but not by much. This was brought to my attention by NP Royalty, along with a few other fans. Many fans are in a Doki Doki panic, worried that Mario Kart 9 is never going to happen because Mario Kart 8 Deluxe continues to sell very well. Mr. Mario Kart here is going to tell you whether or not Mario Kart 9 is likely to happen, or if it's going to drift into non-existence. Not only that, we'll be discussing the future of the Mario Kart franchise as a whole. So to get to the bottom of the issue, we have to look at the start. Mario Kart 8 initially launched as a Wii U game in May of 2014. The keywords there weren't Mario Kart 8, it was launched as a Wii U game. I'm pretty sure most of us know the story of the Wii U, but if you don't know the story, here's a summary of what happened. Nintendo launched the Wii U in November of 2012. Unfortunately, due to poor marketing and just the silly name of the console itself, it ended up being a commercial failure for Nintendo. It only sold a little over 13 million units, making it their worst selling home console of all time. Now sure, the Virtual Boy is their worst selling console ever, not even selling a million units, but nobody's really sure whether or not that's a handheld or a console, because let's be real, I don't think many people were going into Dunkin' Donuts on their lunch break, playing some Nestor's Funky Bowling. The Wii U, however, is undebatably a home console, and unlike the Virtual Boy, it saw more than 22 games and actually saw support for more than a year. The Wii U was supported for about four years, though by 2016, you could pretty much tell Nintendo just gave up on the Wii U. The best game released on the Wii U in 2016 is Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games, and that's when you know, things are pretty bad. And no, Pokémon Tournament doesn't count, since that's a port of an arcade game. Nintendo was in a panic, they needed to come up with a successor fast, because at the time, the only thing keeping them up was the Nintendo 3DS and Amiibos. Yes, a Silver Mario figurine was more crucial to Nintendo's success at the time than their own home console, bringing us to the Nintendo Switch. I'm just gonna say this, I don't care if shills froth at the mouth when they hear this, the Nintendo Switch was clearly rushed to market. You can easily tell this with all the hardware defects it has that were never seen in prior Nintendo consoles. Of course there's the infamous Joy-Con drift, so infamous to the fact that multiple lawsuits are being filed because of it, so Nintendo swiftly acted, recalled all Joy-Cons, and fixed the problem. Nah, I'm just kidding. Their CEO is probably taking a nap right now as they continue to ignore the issue. Then you have issues such as the dock scratching the screen, along with reports of the dock actually warping the Switch itself, meaning that the Switch console bends when it's in the dock because of the heat. So in essence, the Nintendo Switch was rushed to market because Nintendo needed a successful console fast. Not only that, they had a game plan in mind. So what we're gonna do is take a look at the game's release from its launch in March of 2017 to the present. The Nintendo Switch launch with one of the most influential and critically acclaimed games of all time. That being none other than Super Bomberman R. Okay, that was a joke. But what I'm not joking about is Nintendo launched a Switch with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. No doubt about it, that's a major game to launch a console with. But did you know, I know this might be shocking to hear, that The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was initially just developed as a Wii U game? I know, pretty surprising, right? Even myself considers Breath of the Wild synonymous with the Switch. But it was initially developed for the Wii U, and Nintendo actually did the unthinkable and made a smart decision. Nintendo released The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild both on the Wii U and the Nintendo Switch. They released it on the Wii U because they promised fans for many years that it would come to the system. During some time in 2016, Nintendo actually halted Wii U production, so most people weren't planning on buying a Wii U to play The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Instead, they were planning on buying a Switch to play The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Because that was a new system, it actually had a future, whereas with the Wii U, unfortunately that was a lost cause. You cannot deny that The Legend of Zelda is playable on the Wii U, and was initially just going to be a Wii U game, but I don't consider it a port. More of a multi-platform release. What is undoubtedly a port is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It's Mario Kart 8 
but with a battle mode that's actually good, a few new characters and carts, along with some quality of life improvements. I couldn't imagine Mario Kart 8 Deluxe took too long to develop, considering that they didn't even bother to include any new tracks. Also, the game never saw any significant updates. All that it got were a Breath of the Wild costume and cart for Link, as well as Labo support. But regardless, it does not matter that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is a port. What mattered is releasing a Mario Kart game shortly after a console launch, because let's be real, Mario Kart is Nintendo's best-selling franchise, though if I were in charge, I would choose Mario Kart Arcade Grand Prix Deluxe. That's a game I'm fairly certain most people don't own, as two cabinets cost well over $20,000, so if you wanted to play it all day every day, you'd pretty much have to live at Dave & Buster's, but hey Nintendo if you're listening, please release all the Mario Kart Arcade Grand Prix games on the Switch, I will continue to say that in as many videos as possible, because I love the series so much. But I guess maybe you don't want the secret to get out that Bandai Namco could probably make better Mario Kart games than you can. So this leads us to some of Nintendo's other games released for the Switch. Let's say we did get Mario Kart 9 in 2017. That would have been roughly three years after Mario Kart 8 launched. But keep in mind, Mario Kart 8 got DLC. So Mario Kart 8, in essence, stopped development sometime during April 2015. So if Mario Kart 9 were to launch in April 2017, it would have likely been rushed and probably use a fix it later approach that I love as much as Furukawa and the Annoying Orange. Scratch that, I think I might like the Annoying Orange a little bit more, because at least I can get some dumb laughs out of that. But with the fix it later approach, it just angers me. I've talked about it so much that at this point, it's beating a dead horse with a dead horse. I made a video covering the whole topic. But in essence, Nintendo will release a game barren in content at launch, add these updates, fooling naive players into thinking they're getting additional content, when in reality, they're just getting the rest of the game. Some games like this include ARMS, Kirby Star Allies, Mario Tennis Aces, Super Mario Party, Mario Golf Super Rush, along with a few others. So if Mario Kart 9 were to release in April 2017, I can guarantee you, it probably would have been like that. This all ties into my theory that the Nintendo Switch was indeed rushed to market, because if we look at the game's release from 2017 up until February of 2021, a lot of them were either games you could play on the Wii U, or games that use assets from Wii U games. But what about the games that didn't? Let's take a look at Super Mario Odyssey, for example. Nintendo needed to have that major game that was new, exclusive to the Switch, and got fans hyped up to get their new system. Super Mario Odyssey was a game that fans were screaming for for the longest. Everyone wanted an open-world 3D Mario game again, because at the time, all the 3D Mario games we were getting were quite linear, and Super Mario Odyssey was exactly the game that Nintendo needed to really sell the Switch. That's the reason why I got the Switch, and Super Mario Odyssey to this day remains my favorite game of all time, and it is definitely a masterpiece. I don't care what a guy who can't even pronounce Mario says. How about another game? Luigi's Mansion 3. Funnily enough, that started off as a Wii U game, and if you watch the developer interview, they talk about it a little bit. It wasn't going to be a game like Breath of the Wild where it was going to be on the Wii U and the Switch. They just shifted development, and I'm pretty certain that happened with a lot of games. But let's take a look at the future and what's happening now. Have you noticed that a lot of the games on the Switch now are completely original and new? Let's take a look. WarioWare Get It Together, New Pokemon Snap, Metroid Dread, look at the games coming next year, we are getting a lot of brand new games. So in essence, the Switch just had a slow start, so if it were a Pokemon, it would be Regigigas. And this brings us to Mario Kart. As I stated priorly, some fans are worried we won't get Mario Kart 9 because 8 Deluxe continues to sell well. However, I think 8 Deluxe's success makes Mario Kart 9 even more likely. Heck, let's take a look at two games, Splatoon 3 and Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Splatoon 2 sold so well that they'd never make a sequel to it, right? <laughs> we're getting Splatoon 3 next year. When something sells well, you make a sequel to it. Why do you think we got all those yearly Call of Duty games? Success means sequels, and very well could happen with Mario Kart. It actually did. Despite Home Circuit being kind of gimmicky, that was a new Mario Kart game developed for the Switch. Though no resources were being used, as it was primarily developed by Veland Studios, so Mario Kart 9 
could very well happen, so to sum everything up, Mario Kart 9 could still definitely happen. In fact, I think it could probably happen next year. The only thing that set it back was the Switch just had a slow start, and you can see now that things are picking up because 2022 already looks very promising. But what do you guys think? Do you think Mario Kart 9 is going to happen? Or are you going to have an emo phase and just assume Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is going to be the only Mario Kart game for all eternity? I know that's what Jay plays wants, but in the meantime while you wait for Mario Kart 9, I can recommend you some great racing games to play on the Switch, those being Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled and Cruisin' Blast. Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled is perhaps even better than Mario Kart 8 Deluxe because it has a story mode, even more characters, custom skins, it's such a great game. I actually made a video talking about how it's better than Mario Kart 8. Cruisin' Blast isn't a kart racer, but a really fun racing game. It's like Forza, but turned up to the nth degree. You can even drive as a dinosaur. Can you do that in Mario Kart? Because I don't remember Luigi saying, One time I was in Dinosaur World with my kart, and I had to avoid all these T-Rexes and Koopa Wizards! Anyways guys, thanks for watching, and keep calm and da-da on.